board meeting. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before my announcements, we have two presentations. Okay, Jonathan, step up here, please. So we have two presentations tonight from the town board. First, Proclamation, I'll read it. Jonathan Shaw has met, has meet all of the academic standards necessary to be declared a salutatorian. And he is a role model for fellow classmates and underclassmen through exemplifying critical thinking, effective communication, problem solving, organizational skills, and in addition to achieving distinguished grades, Jonathan has demonstrated many admirable qualities such as integrity, hard work, determination, and a commitment to excellence throughout his four years in high school. And Jonathan has many other achievements of note such as serving vice president of the math team, co-vice president of the math honor society, captain of the physics events in the science olympiad. He is also an avid oboist and has participated in the concert band throughout the high school. And whereas he has volunteered his time to the East Fishkill Community Library and to the United Way of Dutchess Orange Region for inaugural Pull the Plane event, Jonathan was also nominated to attend the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards Conference in Mount, at Mount St. Mary's College. And whereas Jonathan is honored at his high school graduation ceremony, but because his achievement is so significant and worthy of commendation, the town of East Fishkill wishes to recognize him as well. And the East Fishkill Town Board is proud to recognize Mr. Jonathan Shaw, the 2021 John J. Senior High School Salutatorian and commends him for all of his impressive accomplishments. And now therefore be it further proclaimed that this certificate shall be presented to Jonathan with our best wishes for his next chapter of education at Binghamton University this fall. Congratulations. And one more, we have the valedictorian from John Jay. Radna, how are you? I'll read this too. Whereas each year an elite student meets the academic standard necessary to be, de be declared a valedictorian of their graduating high school class, and the coursework completed is difficult, and the competition for such an honor is competitive. And this student serves as a role model for their classmates and underclassmen through exemplifying critical thinking, effective communication, problem solving, and organizational skills. And in addition to achieving distinguished grades, this student has demonstrated many admirable qualities such as integrity, hard work, determination, and a commitment to excellence throughout their four years in high school. And this student has many other achievements of note, such as serving as secretary of the Math Honor Society, and is actively involved in the Science Olympiad and the National Honor Society. Also played for the school's varsity soccer team and outside of school have conducted academic research through experiences at multiple institutions, has published papers on regenerative medicine and astrophysics in prestigious scientific journals. Wow. <laughs> Whereas this student is honored at their high school graduation ceremony, but because the achievement is so significant and worthy of commendation, the town of East Fishkill wishes to recognize her as well. And whereas the town of East Fishkill Town Board is proud to recognize Ms. Ratna Sharma for the 2021 John Jay Senior High School Valedictorian and commends her for all of her impressive accomplishments. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Nicholas D'Alessandro, East Fishkill Town Supervisor, dedicate Friday, July 23rd, 2021, Ratna Sharma John Jay Valedictorian Day in the town of East Fishkill. 
and now therefore be further proclaimed that this certificate shall be presented to Ratna with our best wishes for her next chapter of education at Columbia University this fall. Congratulations. <laughs> fortunate to have these students in our community. So congratulations and best of luck to you. Just a few comments before we begin the meeting. Hope everybody is healthy and well. And hope everybody had a very nice 4th of July. We had our concert and fireworks rained out on that Friday, but we rescheduled them for Monday the 5th. And it really worked out great. Uh, the weather was nice, many people turned out for the concert as well as the fireworks. But speaking of fireworks, there is a town resident who likes to put on a very large fireworks display. And that's very nice, but that resident really needs to get a permit to do so. There's a lot of debris that falls from these shows and unfortunately it does fall on many other residents' property and they have been complaining about that. Also, this home display that is shown is coincidentally timed at the same exact time that we have our own town fireworks display. It would be nice if the homeowner would work at a different time so we do not have conflicting uh, displays. Also, for insurance reasons, uh, this large display does need the permit like I mentioned before. God forbid there's some sort of fire or some sort of accident. Uh, because of that show, uh, we really need to get a per they really need to get a permit and have the, the proper insurance. So if anybody knows who does this display, please call Town Hall. And I'd like to thank Bill Green and Christine Selbach for all their hard work with the, uh, the concert and the fireworks display. Uh, Red Wing has been very, very busy. It's been very hot. Uh, we've been shooting, they've been shooting a comedy series at the, at the lake. Amy Schumer, she filmed a series for Hulu. They took our beach facility for three days uh, and they were really, really busy over there. I stopped by one day. They had a huge air conditioned tent, probably 120 feet by 40 feet. They had, I don't know, 50, 75 employees, equipment, tractor trailers worth of equipment. It was really, really impressive. Um, but I'm sorry for any inconvenience to residents. A few did make complaints that the, the, the lake was not available, but they did make a wonderful donation to the town of $15,000 for the three days. It was only three days. I understand some people wanted to use the park uh, because of this hot weather, but we're gonna utilize that, those funds that we're getting for the, from the donation to, to improve Red Wing, whatever, maybe buy something or for maintenance, what have you. But uh, also thank you to Bill Green and Christine as well for helping with this. It was a little bit exciting. On the 6th, I attended a swearing-in ceremony for the new mayor of the village of Fishkill, which is our own very, uh, our very own uh, East Fishkill assessor, Kathy Martin. Uh, big congratulations to Ms. Martin for her election. It's nice to see a friendly face in that position. Uh, we deal a lot with the village of Fishkill for uh, different uh, sharings uh, that we do uh, for uh, water purchases, uh, whatever share service we can do to save taxpayer money. So it's nice that we have a friendly face in there, so congratulations to Ms. Martin. On the 6th also I attended the Dutchess County Mayors and Supervisors Association meeting. This time the venue was in East Fishkill. We try to rotate the venue every month between uh, the different villages, towns, and cities throughout the county. Uh, the chair of the association was not able to attend, so she asked me to chair the event. Uh, we had several topics to discuss. One of them was the new marijuana law and how each municipality can opt out or opt in. And actually, the East Fishkill Town Board will be having a workshop uh, in September, October to discuss that. Uh, also, another big issue was uh, COVID relief funds that the federal government has indicated that we're going to get. Also, we will be discussing that probably in September once we uh, get the funds and how we're going to disperse them. 
So it's uh, the, the Dutchess County Mayors and Supervisors is a really good association. I mentioned it many times. We have a lot of collaboration of ideas. Uh, we, we have different uh, shared services and other plans that we do together. So I'm happy to attend and we do save taxpayer money when we uh, get together and try to uh, get different ideas across. So thank you to all of them. Uh, speaking of the COVID relief bill, um, the, the federal government passed all local municipalities will receive aid. Uh, there are strings attached to those funds though. First, we have to realize what type of loss of revenues that the town did incur. Once we do that, they have uh, given us a formula to figure that out. Once they do that, whatever that figure is, we can utilize those funds in our, uh, put that in our general fund and use that for anything that the town board uh, thinks is uh, uh, good to use it for, perhaps more paving, or what have you, something else. But whatever remains of those dollars uh, we is very specific what we can use it for. We could use it for water and sewer infrastructure, IT infrastructure, uh, for local uh, businesses if we put together some sort of grant, or for non-for-profits also to, to, to give back funding to them. So there's a few things we could use it for. We have a few ideas. We're slated to get about $3 million. They recalculated the amount we were originally were supposed to get about $3.5 million. After the calculation, it looks like we're going to get just a little over $3 million, which will be paid in two different payments, half this year, half next year. Uh, the funds are dispersed to New York State and then they will come to us. New York State has already asked for an extension on dispersing those funds. So we're waiting, we've been waiting to get it. So once we get it, I will let the town board know. Uh, and then we will have for up to four years to uh, spend those funds in the appropriate manner, of course. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we will be having a town board workshop to discuss that and, uh, and get into more detail. So I'll keep everybody posted on that. On the 8th, I attended our East Fishco Rotary meeting. Uh, it's a, another wonderful group that we, uh, that I like to attend their meetings. Uh, it's uh, comprised of most local businesses. Uh, they do a lot of good in our community. They do fundraisings for charities, for nonprofits. Uh, they do scholarships as well. Uh, and it's a good organization. The people network with each other. They try to increase business for one another. Uh, and you know, the list goes on and on what they do. And we're lucky, we're fortunate to have such a dedicated group of business owners in this community. So if anybody would like to join, any business owners like to join, they're always looking for new members, please check online, East Fishco Rotary, or call my office, 2214303, and I'll get you all the information you need. Okay, the Dutchess County Development Advisory Committee. That's another uh, one of the county committees that I sit on. Uh, lately, we've been meeting regularly to discuss uh, grant applications. The Dutchess County CDAC, that's the acronym for it, committee. We recommend grants to uh, the Dutchess County Executive for the Dutchess County Community Investment Programs. We advise the Dutchess County Commissioner of Planning and Development on the Community Investment Programs, Policies and Procedures. So we give our input on all that. And we, re we review all the county grant applications. The MIG grants, which is the Municipal Innovation Grants. The CDBG is the Community Development Block Grants. The APG is the Agency Partner Grants. Uh, and this year was a really good year for grants. Dutchess County had enough resources to fund mostly all the applications, actually all the applications. So it was nice to have that. Usually we're haggling, see who could, what, what, uh, where the funds are gonna be directed to what uh, communities. And it's a group made up of a very diverse group, different supervisors, mayors, county legislators, non-for-profit CEOs, directors of uh, housing authorities. Uh, it's, it's interesting, I, I could say that. Uh, I'm happy to sit on it because uh, it does help out a lot of the communities in Dutchess County. It does take a lot of time. I'm busy, but it's, it's all worthwhile. So thank you to the CDAC committee. And speaking of grants, I've been speaking with our economic development director and our town planner about grants recently. We are applying for several grants. There's a few resolutions tonight for that. Uh, for traffic mitigation improvements in the hamlets, for sidewalks uh, in the hamlets, in, in the Fishkill Plains, different areas. Um, also, we have been approved for a $50,000 grant from Dutchess County for a generator for Town Hall. Uh, this is very important for many reasons. As you know, 
the weather is very volatile and uh, a lot of times that if sometimes we lose power for multiple days we'll be able to use the, the town hall for a warming shelter if need be or a cooling center uh, so it's it's important to have that so thank you to Dutchess County uh, for approving that also we're applying for uh, grants for our comprehensive plan I've mentioned this in the past is a very big undertaking uh, we're going to need a lot of help from the community uh, the last time a master plan was completed in East Fishkill, I believe, was 18 years ago. And uh, we're overdue. Usually they like us to redo a comprehensive plan every 10 years. Um, we had been doing smaller plans. We, we did a study on the Route 52 corridor. We did a study on uh, in, uh, industrial zones in town. Those can all be included in the comprehensive plan we're going we're gonna to initiate. Uh, but, you know, this is a very expensive endeavor as well probably in the neighborhood of $250,000 to $400,000. So it's important that we try to apply for different grants for this uh, to help uh, curb the costs. So uh, thank you to our economic development director and our planner for looking for those. So it's very important. And also our economic development director, I've been discussing with him uh, to get back our uh, economic development and business committee back on track. Uh, we haven't met since before COVID, and it's time to get those businesses together and for us to get back to business. So uh, there are going to be a few changes to the committee. A few members have dropped off, so we're excited for these new members to, to join us. They're excited to join this committee. We help local businesses in many different ways. We've been uh, hosting uh, different business forums where they come here. We provide them with information. Because what happens is a lot of small business owners in town are not town residents. So they don't get to hear what's going on in town, maybe, maybe traffic issues happening, different projects happening. So it's a good time for us to get together, share the information with them, hear the feedback from them, and get them answers. So it's a very good committee. Uh, Councilman Marinaro is the liaison to that as well. And uh, it's, it, it helps. And I'm happy and thankful to all the volunteers who, who are on that committee. So thank you. Uh, last week, I held a department head meeting here at Town Hall. I try to have these meetings every quarter. Uh, it's beneficial to get the department heads all together, discuss what's going on in different departments. Many times, department heads are very busy. Uh, not our highway superintendent, but the chief of police is very busy. So uh, it's good that they come, we get together, we discuss what's happening, and perhaps maybe they can uh, ask for help from different departments. We do like to share employees. Uh, it, it works out very well uh, trying to share employees. So, uh, and I thank all the town employees for doing that as well. We've been doing a lot of sharing lately. We've had some positions that left us. So thank you to the employees for their hard work and all the department heads. Congress Maloney, he was here. This uh, Congressman Maloney was here this past Sunday. He held an outdoor town hall style meeting uh, with members of our community. It was an open discussion. Residents came, asked questions, what ha whatever was on their mind. The congressman engaged with whatever uh, uh, you know answer he came up with. It was very nice. Uh, it was okay attended. Probably 30 to 40 people attended. Um, and also last month at the end of uh, June, there was a press conference held at our community center uh, for U.S. Senator Kristen Gillibrand and New York State Attorney General Letitia James. Uh, also in attendance was the County Executive Molinaro, our New York State Senator Sue Serino. Uh, the U.S. Senate passed a bipartisan uh, bill, or they're in the process of, to crack down on crimes aimed towards seniors uh, in our community, those who try to take advantage of our seniors. So it was nice. They did the, the, the press conference in our town. I don't know why, but they chose East Fishkill. Uh, so thank you to Senator Gillibrand for coming. And, you know, we've been getting a lot of uh, bigwigs, I guess, coming to East Fishkill. I guess they know we mean business here, right? Uh, Hopewell North Water District. Uh, actually, before we do that, uh, could the engineer give us a little update on the Route 376? Uh, water line, some of the councilmen were asking. Sure. And when the connection for Worley would be the emergency connection. Okay, well, uh, so two things we have going on. One is the, uh, the bid and the project going on along 376 to interconnect uh, the Hamlet water supply to uh, Fishkill Plains. That's, that's ongoing right now. They're probably about 50% complete with that project, so that's ongoing. 
Uh, the second part is the emergency connection to Revere and Worley. Um, one of the things we ran into is with shortages of materials. There's a, a couple of like an uh, RPZ valve, a pressure reducing valve that we need, some meters of a large diameter that are not readily available. They're like a, for over a four month lead item. So what we've been doing is doing like a quick field redesign to, to on a temporary basis use smaller diameter uh, RPZs and meters. Uh, we had to get the health department to sign off on that. We're in the process of that, which we will gain their approval. Uh, we were able to procure those materials locally, and they should be arriving, I think, next week. And then the hope is within the next couple weeks to go ahead and, and move forward installing those on a temporary basis so we can go live in maybe three or four weeks' time uh, while we wait for the permanent materials to come in. We'll install later. So, so both projects are moving forward. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that update. Uh, like I mentioned, Hopewell North Water District. So, as everybody knows, <laughs> I've been trying to keep as much updates as I can with the Hopewell North Water District. We've been having some issues there. Um, as most of you know, we they were discovered some plugs in the line uh, more than a year ago. Uh, these plugs are pipe coverings that when they do the construction, they cover the ends of the pipe <coughs> until they're ready to be uh, installed. And some of them were found inside the water lines. So to date, I believe it's 11, 11, 11 of these plugs have been found. After the first plug was found, uh, the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers, along with the contractor, Conti Construction, they did a full investigation. They implemented this uh, comprehensive plan in, uh, to search the system. They cameraed the system. They found plugs. They found debris in the line, uh, dirt and other things. So um, most of the lines were cameraed, but not all. Uh, they did a series of flushings to, uh, because, the, like I said, the cameras found debris and dirt and rocks in there. So they did a, 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 a series of flushings to, to clear the lines. And um, it looks like at this part, most of their protocol has been met, but I feel like it hasn't been fixed. So, uh, and also, I mentioned this several months ago, not only have we had these plugs and this debris and dirt in the lines, but also we've been having a lot of leaks in the system. So, after a lot of urging from our engineering staff, um, the contractor decided to do a forensic investigation on the, uh, on the, um, the valves that they that they put in, so it came out pretty much that they don't. They think they used possibly the wrong valve. The final investigation has not been finished. They wait, we're waiting for the report from the uh, the third party uh, engineering firm that did this. So once we do, then we can have a, a plan to put together of how we're going to move forward to fix the, all this. So. Like I mentioned earlier, we had a lot of pu higher public officials that become visiting, so I tried to mention to them that we are having some issues. So today I had a meeting with our town attorney, our town engineer, uh, with the uh, chiefs of staff from Congressman Maloney's office, Senator Gillibrand, and Senator Schumer's office. And we had a very good meeting. We had it here at Town Hall. I explained to them what is going on with the Hopewell North Water District, all the frustration we're having with the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers because of the contractor. And they all agreed that they will be having internal meetings the next, next week, actually, they want to do it before August 1st, and they will also meet with the EPA and Army Corps as they are the governing agency over them. So they're going to fill me in on what's going to happen. Uh, we, are, we provided them with a lot of backup information. We're going to provide them with whatever more we can give them, and hopefully we can get uh, some sort of resolve to this. We're asking for a long-term uh, warranty period because we, I do not want the residents of the Hopewell Water District to pay for any fix, any fixes, any debris, anything in this line. This is a brand new system, okay? That the, this is taxpayer money that had to pay for this. The EPA paid for this. We're very thankful. But the, any burden on fixing or anything should not be held to our residents because this is a brand new system. Like you bought a brand new car and you have a lot of problems. Then what happens? It's a lemon. You try to get a new car. Well, we hope we didn't have a lemon of a water district, but I'm going to make sure to do whatever I can that these people do not have to pay not a dollar for any of these fixings because it's not their fault. So I'd like to thank our engineer, our town attorney, our comptroller. A lot of hard work into this. It's been 
very, very frustrating for us to deal with this, to deal with these government agencies, and uh, hopefully it's going to be resolved. I'm very thankful to all the chiefs of staff from Schumer's office, Gillibrand, and Congressman Maloney's office for coming, spending the time, and they said that they will help us, so thank you very much. And with that, Deputy Clerk, could you call the roll? Councilman Cassidy. Present. Councilman Franco. Present. Councilman Marinero. Present. Councilman Beaven. Present. Supervisor Del Sandro. Present. Thank you. We do have one public hearing tonight. Okay, do I have a motion to open the public hearing to consider rules and regulations for recreational areas? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Public hearing now opened. So, as people have heard or read on social media or have visited the uh, town park lately, especially the one here in, in Hopewell, we've had some issues with some teenagers and maybe some other older children, and it's hard to police because we don't have the proper laws or the proper policies, I should say. So this will help that. Um, could the town attorney give us a little brief overview of sure. this intent? Well, have you, as you have indicated, there have been some, <coughs> unfortunately, increased vandalism and other violations of the regulations that already exist in the town parks. And the police, in trying to deal with it, uh, try to fit these violations into the criminal justice system as it's laid out now and that we've been getting unsatisfactory results because when you deal with a minor it goes through the family court and what happens is while that's pending they're still enjoying the park facilities so what this is an attempt to do is is as follows everyone is presumed to have the right to come into a town park um, that's what it's open for it's open to the public this law would provide however if you violate the rules of conduct in the park that are clearly posted, adopted by the town board and posted at all our parks, if you violate them, the police can then issue you a uh, offense notice. And the first one would be a warning to say, you know, you violated, et cetera. The second offense would revoke your right to be in a town park for a period of up to 10 days. Um, and the third offense would be revoke it for a period of 60 days and a fourth offense is revoked for a period of a year. So what this does is, in addition to whatever process could be initiated because of the offense in the criminal justice system, this would revoke the right of that person, he or she, to utilize the park uh, during the time period. It provides that if they disagree with that, they have the right to appeal, and the hearing officer would make a determination. So this is an attempt to supplement the tools that we have, hopefully to uh, curtail some of the mischief and vandalism, et cetera, that we're experiencing in the town parks. Thank you, town attorney. Would uh, anybody from the public wish to speak for or against or any comments or questions on this, uh, this uh, system to regulate behavior in town parks? No, any comments from the town board? Questions? Uh, yeah, I have one. Sure. The, um, <clears throat> for the for the chief also um, enforcing this. The, this looks like uh, four different offenses uh, that the police would have to be responsible for maintaining all the records for. Um, quite frankly, I I'd like to see it. Um, you know, I'm more of a three strikes and you're out type of person rather than <laughs> having four. Um, <clears throat> you know, my personal opinion. After you you've been given a warning, you know, you really you, you should know by now. You should know after that warning. Um, you know, 10 days, my personal opinion, I would go, you know, a warning a month, a year, three strikes, and that's it. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but we, we've had um, a number of occurrences. We could do, we can do anything we decide here, right? I'm okay with that. <clears throat> Chief, what's your feeling on the, um, the warnings and the days? <clears throat> I think if you add it to three, it would work better. We already have individuals who meet the criteria. So right. three would be perfect. Three would be enough? Sure. Yeah, but it would probably, that would start over, right? Once this is passed, right? then it would start with strike one. Right. With the warning. Right, with the warning. Mm -hmm. And we would, our officers or 
we would warn them that this is their warning. The next one, they'll be out for 30 days. If that, that's what you said, 30 days. Mm -hmm. And Do they then get like a written warning? Is it like a documented thing they get? That's the plan, yes. This isn't fun. This isn't fun for any of us. We don't want, we don't want to do this. We don't want to be uh, kicking people out of the park, but it's getting to the point where we have no choice. Yes. They're, they're, disrupting, uh, they're disrupting ball games. They're disrupting parents with strollers. They, it's it's, it's not fun. This is not, this is not fun. Yes, no, we sir. We all witnessed uh, it firsthand. Yeah. I was going to ask regarding damages. I mean, damages is, is one thing disrupting a, a game is something else. How does that how does that work when somebody does damage to something? Well, I mean, is it is it property one, one, damage huh? or yeah, property damage? The yeah, I mean, well, you give them three chances on property damage. No, no, no. Oh. This is this would be in addition to under the law, a parent is responsible for damages caused by a minor child up to $1,500. Okay. So this would be in addition to the town seeking that compensation from the uh, guardian or parent of the, if it's right. a minor, if it's a, an adult, then there is no limit. Right. To seek the All right, thank you. And w so everybody knows, we did have our bathrooms vandalized twice. Yeah, I went twice. berserk the second time. We did catch them and they did make restitution, so. I mean, this all comes, uh, like the town supervisor just mentioned before, we really don't like to do what we are approaching to do. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the community has to understand that once we, we create a situation where damages are, are made to certain structures, that the taxpayers end up paying the bill. And it's not fair. So I would really love to see the parents get more involved you know, rather than letting their kids and get out of the park, come around, make sure your kids are behaving. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's a responsibility. And as a parent, we all have that obligation to our kids to make sure that they're behaving and they're not getting themselves in trouble. Right. So uh, sometimes we're forced, and I really hate to see what to do what we're doing tonight. Uh, but, uh, you know, kids have to be more responsible, not only them, but their parents before the kids. Yeah, and th we, we, we've gone through this with several children. You know, unfortunately, there's, uh, you know, the same, same ones doing the same issues, and we've addressed it with parents, okay, and it seemed to have no effect. And, you know, our police department has more important things to do than to be tracking down these children, going to their homes. And I told the chief, make sure that it doesn't happen during a busy time. Send the police department at their house at one or two o'clock in the morning when we're not as busy. Because why should an officer be taking time off of our roads when it's time to, to patrol our streets? Go at one, two o'clock in the morning, wake up the parents and tell them what the children are doing. Because it's not fair. It's not fair for the rest of the residents. So I, can we amend, so we can make an amend, amendment saying the first offense with a warning, the second offense 30 days, and the third offense one year. Right, okay. Any other, do you have any okay. comments? So when you get caught and you go back in, he throws you out for 30 days. Then it says, if I show up there under penal law for trespass, what does that mean? Well, what that is is criminal trespass is a class A misdemeanor. <laughs> So that's a higher level crime than you could be charged with just for uh, disorderly conduct, harassment, et cetera. And in fact, there may even be other provisions that are higher offense because of public property. But that, that's the intent of this is to, if you come back when you're not supposed to be there, it allows us then to bring uh, more severe charges than we could if you didn't have this kind of system in place. How does this record work? Like, does it follow kids for like the rest of their life, or is it sealed? No, no, no. This it would not be. It's not a criminal thing. Uh, we'll purge the records uh, at appropriate periods of time. There's no registration into any system. Nothing like that. Okay. But it but it gives us the ability to get rid of those kids if to maybe. revoke their consent right. to be in town. Well, actually, this isn't technically just for kids. Well, it's for, for anyone. anyone. Yeah. For anybody. Anybody. Right. 
You're right. So, so the police could finally get rid of you yeah, in the parks. I get thrown out of the park. <laughs> Don't throw me out for September. I gotta be there for community today. October. <laughs> okay. Any anybody wish to speak anything else on this uh, on this potential um, regulation? No, any other comments from the board? Okay. Do I have a motion to adopt the NAG deck? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Do I have a motion to close the to public hearing, sir? Oh. I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? No move. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Public hearing closed. And do I have a motion to adopt the local law? As amended. Oh, as amended. That's right. Thank so you. Moved. A second. second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Local law now passed. Thank you. Deputy Clerk, everybody received the June 24, 2021 minutes. Any changes, additions? Subtractions? No. Do I have a motion to approve June 24, 2021 minutes? So moved. Second? Second. Any, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Minutes approved. Thank you. Uh, we do have two from the floor tonight. Well, two, but it's really one. Uh, one is to uh, a determination for East Fishkill drive by remote water reading to um, determine as a type two for secret review and also to apply for a grant for this drive by remote water reading. So I'll do those at the end. Uh, courtesy of the floor, time of the meeting, anybody in the audience wish to speak on any uh, agenda items, any general town issues, anything you like? Anybody but Mr. Grasso? No. No? no? Nobody? Okay. Okay, we don't have any receipt and file. Resolution one. Deputy Supervisor. Oh, yes, we're going to do that first. Thank you very much. We're going to do number five first because we have a gentleman waiting here. Uh, Councilman B. Pan. All right. Authorize the hiring of a recreation director. Whereas the full-time recreation director position has been vacant for three months, whereas the supervisor has identified the need to backfill the position as and hire a qualified candidate it has been established by Dutchess County Human Resources that there is a non-mandatory list for recreation director. The town board has interviewed the eligible candidates recommended by the town supervisor. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board appoints Matthew Salamon to the position of recreation director at the annual salary of $60,000, and further resolve said position will be a non-union managerial position, and further resolve such person will commence work on or after July 26, 2021. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to hire Matthew Salamon, rec director? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? So we did have a, um, uh, an opening for, as rec director. Our rec director did uh, leave for another position and uh, we did extensive, <laughs> very extensive interviews. I think Lots of interviews. 14, we did a lot of interviews. Lot of interviews. And uh, we're very happy Matthew is going to join us. Uh, very excited. A fellow East Fishkill resident. Fellow East Fishkill resident, yeah, grew up here in our parks as well, so that's very nice. Any other comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carried. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Okay, so then number one, Councilman uh, Cassidy. Authorized for the hiring of the C3 consultants to be the independent industrial building inspectors. Whereas the town board acknowledges that industrial building construction occurs from time to time, and whereas the town planning and engineering staff have secured Z3 consultants for large and commercial industrial projects that may occur within the town, be it further resolved, the town board hereby authorizes the hiring of Z3 consultants to be special independent building inspectors for large scale commercial and industrial projects. Thank you, Deputy Supervisor. Do I have a motion to the hiring of Z3 consultants? So, do I have a second? Second. Discussion? So, time to time, we get large projects. As everybody knows, Amazon's building in our town. I'm sure you've all seen it. 
Uh, they're going very fast too. So uh, projects like this, other commercial, industrial projects, sometimes we need other consulting um, inspectors. So this would aid us in that. The engineer did, uh, did interview the, um, the principal of Z3 and very happy in, uh, of their capabilities, correct? And they've uh, performed similar large scale jobs. So they're familiar with the codes as they apply to these large projects. Excellent. So, and you know, it's uh, especially this time of year, building department is very, very busy. Uh, we are short staffed as well in that department. So this would be uh, to lighten the load as well. So any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. Okay, number two, Councilman Franco. Whereas the town engineer is requesting administrative changes in the Department of Engineering Code Administration, whereas the town engineer has submitted an administrative flow chart to the town board for their review. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board has reviewed the attached flow chart and authorizes, authorizes the adoption thereof. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to adopt the administrative flow chart for the engineering department? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? So this is really updating our, uh, what we have. We did hire another engineer uh, two months ago, three months ago, uh, George Cronk. He's been working out excellent, by the way. Uh, so we had to uh, make sp space for him in our flow chart, so make sure everybody understands who everybody speaks to and who is to report to. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I think you've got more people under you than Nick's got under him. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Still not as big as the police department. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chief, say chief. Everything Yikes. goes back to the police. You're in charge, chief. <laughs> How about the food chain? Okay. Do I have, I have a motion and a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. Number three. Okay. Councilman Marinero? Authorizing the hiring of interns for various departments, where the town board is in need of interns to assist in clerical functions necessary to operate the town departments. Mm -hmm. And whereas the town, at the discretion of the town supervisor, may hire additional interns for the summer season. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby acknowledges the hiring of Jonathan Sash, Schreier Parbu, Alexandra Webb, Stephanie Jean Baptiste, Cara Nalbandian, Jeffrey Shosh, Carl DeMarco, Stephen Jean Baptiste, and Lara Vasquez. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the interns are hereby appointed as seasonal employees in the town, being paid at an hourly rate of $14, and be further resolved that said interns shall work at the pleasure of the town supervisor in according in accordance with all previously established rules and regulations, and will be removed from the payroll upon completion of the tasks. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to authorize the hiring of the interns? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? So these interns are really smart. They are excellent. They're doing excellent work, and uh, we're happy to have them. We're happy to do this program. We'll work with the uh, uh, John Jay and the other high schools. So this is working out really well. I'd like to have this continue. Uh, the chief, did you get to get an intern? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, how about you, Kenneth? We have one tomorrow. Oh, very good. Very good. And it's good to show uh, you know these <coughs> these students like to see. Uh, some of them are going to be seniors. Some of them are off to college. So it's good for them to get a little uh, uh, different environment. See what everything's going on in town hall, different departments. It's it's working out really well. So. A lot of these, uh, uh, you know, young men and women have <laughs> more qualifications than all of us on this board. I'll tell you that. Uh, so, huh? How do they approach you? Like, I didn't know all this for my daughter. Like, yeah, they they well, they work with certain different departments. They can ask all different questions. We try to rotate them. It's it's working out well, very well. How long? Well. Does it take? How long is it? Is it how long? Yeah. Till the end of the summer. Oh, just yeah, school. and it was right. done through the school. It was done through the school, though. Yeah. yeah. My daughter was more on the science side, so you know, Stanford and all that. But I would have loved to be here. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I didn't know. We yeah. didn't know. 
Yeah, this is the first year we've done it. So, yeah, this is the first year. So, longer it will do, will continue. It's been working out excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion approved. Thank you. Number four. Uh, Councilman B. Pan. Whereas the Toll Brothers, the developer of the Hopewell Glen subdivision, has requested a reduction in a performance bond previously posted, whereas the Planning Board has reviewed said request, which is attached, and recommended a reduction to the Town Board. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the performance bond posted by the Toll Brothers for the Hopewell Glen subdivision phase three and the amount be of and hereby reduced from $173,600 to $135,000. $900 for phase three. Excellent. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to, for the bond reduction for Hopewell Glen? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Everybody see the uh, So, legendary... Scott, is this the last phase of this uh, project, or no. there is another phase coming? Well, I think there's five phases. They actually built the project a little bit out of phase. This is a phase up by the what would have been the tank site. And uh, this is really just some housekeeping. You know, they had... I don't, it's a rather small reduction in, in the bond amount, but I guess to clean up their books, they're, they're trying to clean up as much as they can, so. Okay, everybody see the famous engineer memo? Any comments or questions, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. Number six, we will table number six. Number seven. Uh, Deputy Supervisor. Oh, uh, actually, yeah. Actually, we, yeah, number seven is a, um, a resolution we have for to grind all the uh, debris and wood at the brush yard we have. If everybody remembers, it's now three years ago we had a microburst in the uh, Wicopee area. Well, we were lucky. We uh, did a lot of borrowing from the city of Poughkeepsie, town of Poughkeepsie, the county, the state, loaned us a lot of vehicles, a lot of equipment. We had a lot of downed trees <coughs> on the mountainside. And we used our, uh, it's not ours, we used where we have the brush drop-off area to store all that. Well, the last several years we've been supposed to get rid of all that wood and debris, but we haven't. So we're at the point now we'd like to do that. Uh, so we did an RFP, and it was a lot, it was high. It was very high. So I think that we're going to go uh, think about. We there was one bidder. We're going to try to work with that lowest bidder to see uh, how we can change it to uh, perhaps be a little more cost effective. Perhaps our highway could do some work and we can uh, lower the price because I'm just not happy with the price. It was too high. So we will table that as well. Uh, number eight, uh, Councilman Franco. Whereas the town of East Fishkill is seeking funding for traffic and roadway improvements to improve walkability, reduce congestion, and support economic development and revitalization within the Hopewell Junction Hamlet. Whereas the town of East Fishkill is eligible to apply for funding through the Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program for Route 82 safety improvements, congestion reduction, traffic flow, and pedestrian improvements along the Route 82 corridor, generally between Trinka Lane and Unity Street with a connection to Fishkill Road and Hopewell Junction. Whereas Toll Brothers previously committed funds for traffic improvements to Fishkill Road related to the construction of the Hopewell Glen subdivision, and the remaining $500,000 will be committed to this project as part of the required local match. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized town staff to submit a grant application to the Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program in an amount not to exceed $6,250,000 including the 20% local match to construct the Route 82 safety improvements, congestion reduction, traffic flow, and pedestrian improvements along the Route 82 corridor between Trinka Lane and Unity Street with a connection to Fishkill Road and Hopewell Junction. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to apply for this grant? Do I have a second? Second. The discussion. So it's time now to apply for grants. You'll see several resolutions tonight for that. Um, this grant, the CMAC grant, last was in 2019. We lost to the town of Wappinger, did a, got approved for a roundabout at New Hackensack Road and Route 376 by the airport. It was very high on the, um, 
the agenda for the for the uh, county executive to reinvent the 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 airport there, and this all played into so we got second fiddle for our for our project. So this plan would essentially have roundabouts in the hamlet uh, at Unity and at Trinca, and do a connection road by uh, by Trinca. I'm sorry, by Trinca that would go to Hopewell Glen. So the whole idea is to have this safety improvements, traffic uh, uh, mitigation uh, improvements as well, pedestrian improvements. It's a big project, very large project. Uh, we were, we almost got the grant, we were almost approved. Um, it's uh, it's a long time coming. With this, everybody knows we have the middle lane going down Route 82 in the center of Hopewell. Everybody calls it the suicide lane because that's what it is. Uh, eventually, we're very close. I think we're at 18,000 plus cars per day that travel that road. When we reach 20,000 cars per day, per day, the DOT has indicated that that suicide lane, that middle lane, does not function correctly. So what they will do is they will close that lane literally close it. They will put dividers in so nobody can make any left-hand turns. And I don't think that would be beneficial for the town at all. So we're trying to uh, get this grant, this plan that we have in place uh, uh, approved. It's a large plan, six and, almost six and a half million, six and 250,000. And uh, it, part of that would also be to have a bypass road uh, that that is uh, that would run perpendicular with uh, what is that uh, Trinca, so that we can have access to those other businesses because the, it is imperative that when they do this construction, people can still access those businesses. We don't need those businesses uh, going out of business. We don't, you know, it's a, it's going to be a, a lot of construction. So. The first plan would be is to get that bypass road in the back so everybody could utilize it and, and, and still access those businesses. So this is a large plan. It's, it's, if we get approved, it's gonna be a very, very big benefit for our community. So I'm thankful to the, our, our town planner. She's been looking at this in detail, our engineer, working with Hudson Valley engineer, our consultants. It's, uh, it's been a lot of work, so. Any comments or questions? The bid they got in 2019 was five million. Now it's up to 6.2. And when are they starting that? We'll start them. <laughs> you didn't even get approved. Well, how do you know they're going to start it? Oh, I thought you said they got approved. Who? The one oh, Wappinger plan. Wappinger plan. I'm sorry. They got, they got approved. About they got ours. approved two and a half years yeah. ago. They haven't started. Well, yet. they're in the process well, of like acquiring a building and stuff. And, no, and they're, they're, they're doing. Yeah, they're doing. Uh, um, they're exactly like you said. Yeah, they're just getting one building. And also, there's engineering. There's uh, several years of engineering now. Sure. Engineering. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. So, uh, I mean, uh, snap the finger. It's going to be done. I got enough to that, keep track of here. That uh, Route 82 corridor. It's been a discussion in our town for well, over years. 10 years. 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. So we have had some obstacles, you know, with the, the railroad and the bridge by my house was on the plan before I bought my house and bought my land in 80, in 96. They were talking about lowering that bridge. Oh, see, you should have moved. The suicide lane's been going it's been disappearing for 20 years. So I think it's gonna happen. Well, the bridge is definitely being replaced. The DOT already funded that. So, but that's a different project. So, so it's a good improvement for the community. This will be, sure. this will be huge. This will be, uh, you know, even, even the amenities that it'll bring, it'll be a raised medium in the middle, they'll do all plantings and trees down the center, it'll be beautiful. So it's, uh, it's very beneficial. We have those renderings. Should have brought them out there. Yeah, well, once we, uh, if we get close, we'll bring them out, we'll do a whole workshop on it. We'll do a whole workshop on it. But we'll do a workshop on all grants anyway, so. Uh, okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carry, thank you. Okay, number nine, Councilman Marinaro. Authorize the engineering and planning departments to apply to the Smart Road Comprehensive Planning Grant Program for an update of, to the Town of East Fishkill 2002 Comprehensive Plan. Whereas the Town of East Fishkill is seeking funding to update the town's 
2002 comprehensive plan, whereas the Tanavis fiscal is eligible to apply for funding through the Smart Growth Comprehensive Planning Grant Program. Now, therefore, be resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorizing the town staff to submit a consolidating funding application for the Smart Growth Comprehensive Planning Grant Program in an amount up to $100,000, which uh, requires a minimum of 10% of the total project cost in matching funds <coughs> up to $10,000 in the form of cash equity contributed by the town. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to authorize the um, application for this grant? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? So like I mentioned in my comments, we are way behind to do a comprehensive plan, a master plan. Um, this is one of the grants for it. Our town planner, we share our town planner with the town of Cortland down in Westchester. Uh, they completed a master plan, I believe, in 2019. And uh, they were very successful in getting grants. So we are piggybacking off of that. And they actually won a big award for it. So hopefully we can do that as well. Uh, but th th definitely it's very, it's very costly. And it's going to take a lot of uh, community buy-in, a lot of interaction with the community. So uh, this is just the beginning. So do I have a, I have a motion and second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Can I, uh, Nick, yeah, oh, can sure. I, yes. I have a question for Tom. Tom, uh, as far as this project, the comprehensive plan, is it a total revamp or do we have to just address certain parts well, of it? The hope it? would be that we could do the whole plan, uh, but cost may drive it down that we'll just do sections of it. So that's to be determined whether we get the grants or so not. So we actually don't know until we get into the right, process. Right, because town law recommends that the town board review the master plan every 10 years. So we're overdue for that. Uh, we, as the supervisor said, we did some supplemental studies and supplement. So we'll try to work around that and try to just and get into the section. And then at that point, we'll have an idea of what needs to be addressed. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a master plan should be done every 10 years. We're at 18, so. Yeah, it's going to take a 10-year bond to pay it off. <laughs> I know. It's expensive. It's expensive to do. All right, number 10, uh, Councilman Pan. Whereas the highway superintendent and town engineer has had the Warren Farms Road Bridge analyzed by an independent consultant, following a review and inspection of said facilities, it has been determined that it is appropriate to set a weight limit for said bridge. It is the desire of the town board to formally set the weight limit uh, that the Warren Farm Road Bridge be hereby determined to be restricted to the weight not exceeding 18 tons. And we had further resolved that the highway superintendent be and hereby authorized to direct, uh, be and directed to post said weight limits forthwith. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to authorize the weight limit on Warren Farm Road Bridge? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? This bridge is really old. <laughs> How old is this bridge? 40 years or something like that. 40 years? Wow. So we applied for a grant. I yes, believe. we did. Yep. Yes, we did. So the New York State uh, has been uh, had a program for culverts and bridges. Last month, we applied for a, uh, a a grant to replace this bridge. So hopefully, we'll get that as well. Does this weight limit impact the fire department at all? Uh, we tried to make sure school buses could get over. Obviously, emergency vehicles. Emergency have to do vehicles with that. never affect yeah. so, uh, any weight limits. Any other comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. Number 11, Councilman Franco. Whereas the town engineer has identified a need for the installation of a water storage tank lining for Four Corners Water District, now therefore be it resolved that the town engineer is authorized to advertise for bids for the installation of a water storage tank lining for Four Corners Water District. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to authorize the engineer to adver advertise for bids? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? So Four Corners has been very busy there talking about water lately. We're looking to drill a new well. Now we have to do a, a liner for the tank. Uh, what's the timetable on that if this goes well? As far as the lining? Yeah. Well, we're hoping to do it this fall. That's what we're hoping to do okay. this fall. 
and uh, we're still waiting to hear from uh, Dutchess County Board of Health on the new well, if we could dig it, or are we <coughs> past that? Well, we've, uh, we've completed drilling uh, well five. Um, we do have approximately 150 gallons a minute that we found from that well, which is good. The problem is it's, it's very turbid and dirty. Uh, quite honestly, initially, uh, our hydrogeologists did not think it was uh, going to be a well that we we're going to be able to put in production. That's a rock well? That's a rock well. However, because it, it does have 150 gallons a minute, which is not easy to find, we, we are still going to go move forward with a flushing program. We, we don't have a lot of options at Four Corners, so with that said, I think we really need to exhaust this particular well to see if we can get it to clean up. It could take three months, six months, a year, but you know we'll trend it over time, and if we see we're making progress, we'll continue. If after three months we're not making any progress, we'll stop. But you know we don't have a lot of, a lot of options. We are considering now a sixth well, a test well. We have to go through the whole process again with the health department, the DEC, you know, to, to be able to even t drill a test well. So, so what does debris that it's the 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 line is dirty or there's dirt and rock in well, there. Well, in rock, you get seams. If you drive down the highway, you see how rock, you know, is layers and, and some looks really solid, some looks more fractured. It's the fractures that brings you the water, allows the water to flow through. But at the same time, depending on how decomposed it is, it can allow, you know, it disintegrates over time, it decomposes and you get these fines and you get very turbid water and it just doesn't, doesn't clean up and you, and you obviously can't drink that. And our so. filtration wouldn't filter that out. Not well, depending on the degree, I mean, mm -hmm. a minor degree, yes, you can filter it out, you know, through cartridge filters and other means, but, you know, there's a cost factor associated with that. If you're changing your filters every day, it, it just becomes to the point where you can't, right. can't manage it. So uh, the other side where our other well is, you know, the, the rock is very, uh, there's a lot of cavities that we're finding, large cavities underneath the ground when you put the cameras down. So. That one well that failed, it, it worked fine for 10 years, but then you had a, a collapse, and then it opens up a, a vein that uh, has decomposed rock in it, and now all of a sudden you got basically muddy water or, or turbid water. So, you know, it's we're working on it. You know, right? we're working it's on difficult. it. It's a difficult thing, and that's why we're studying uh, Beekman. The board approved a study at Beekman Last to month, see if yes. we can cr maybe create a more regional supply from Beacon and possibly look ahead to interconnect these other systems, right. including Four Corners. Just so. like the town board passed last year, our interconnection on Route 376 that the engineer gave a, a update on earlier. We're trying to interconnect all our systems, so if the event a well fails or something, we have redundancy. We don't have to worry about trying to find water because yeah, it's we've a been problem. fortunate. Over the last years, you know, the Hopewell Glen project came along, allowed us to use the, that piping network to, to get to Fishkill Plains now. The EPA project allowed us to develop the cannon wells, which when we had our hit at our old well field, allowed us to turn those wells off. And through these interconnections, we still have redundancy. We can pull water from cannon, we can pull water from the county. So, you know, it, it's good to keep connecting systems because you never know when you're gonna run into a problem. Right. That's our goal. So, so Scott, yes. So, uh, I used to be, I used to work in oil and gas offshore, next time. So how, how deep are these wells? Uh, the well we just drilled, 760 feet. We would never set our well pump down that far, but that's how went deep we went, 760, yeah. So Scott, the storage tank that we have an issues with now, what's the life expectancy of those tanks? Well, the history of that uh, is it, it, it's in the foundation of the tank, okay? It's in the foundation. And we did make an effort, you know, because it's expensive. And we made an effort to, uh, we brought a, a company in, and they did crack sealing with epoxy. And, you know, for a while that, that solved the problem, but the problem's reoccurring now. We're losing probably over 30,000 gallons a day as of right now. So this time around, we're just going to put a liner in it. Replace the floor and put a liner. So. Are these concrete uh, tanks or are these steel? No, it's a metal. It's a steel line tank, glass line tank with a concrete foundation. And I think the problem stemmed from when they placed the concrete originally. There wasn't enough quality control at the time. And we didn't build that tank, but we bought that tank. But Yeah, we bought that system after yeah. the fact. Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.
two from the floor. The one uh, type two secret determination. Deputy Supervisor. That's first. Uh, type two secret determination for the East Fishkill Drive by remote water reading. Whereas the East Fishkill Town Board reviewed a part one short environmental assessment form for the installation and or replacement of radio frequency reading devices and water meters for approximately 1,447 meter locations at very lo <coughs> various locations throughout the town, including the following. Town Water Districts, Revere Park, Pinewood Knolls, Taconic Estates, Little Switzerland, Hopewell Hamlet, Hopewell Hamlet 2, Brett View, Brett View 2, Four Corners, Beekman, and Hopewell West, Worley. Uh, whereas the East Fishkill Town Board determined this action as a Type 2 action, now therefore be resolved that the Town Board has determined, determined the proposed action is a Type 2 action under Seeker, and no further Seeker review is required. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to uh, approve the determination as Type 2 for the um, drive-by water reading devices? So, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? So this is part one of the, the second resolution is next. We're applying for a grant that would have this uh, drive-by remote water reading. So we have a lot of water districts. Uh, as the councilman read, this would help uh, Revere Park, Pinewood Knolls, Taconic Estates, Little Switzerland, Hopewell Hamlet, Hopewell Hamlet 2, Brett View, Brett View 2, Four Corners, Beekman, and Hopewell West. Um, because some of the newer systems, Hopewell Glen, Hopewell North Water District, already have this technology. So it's very expensive though. It's about $1.6 million project. The grant would cover about 50% of that. The rest would be borne by all the districts. So this is part one. We had to do a type two to show that this was a type two uh, secret determination. After that, then we can apply for the grant showing that it is a type two um, determination. So do I have a motion and a second? Right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carry. And the last one, authorizing the grant application to New York State. New York State through the consolidated funding application process. Uh, there are grant funds available for certain environmental projects like this. The desire of the town board is to authorize application of said grant. Town board has reviewed secret and determined that this is a type two action. The resolution we just passed, it, the project will help all the water districts I mentioned before. Uh, the project scope includes the installation or replacement of approximately 1,447 meters. East Fishkill qualifies for a 50% match of that funding. Uh, the town of East Fishkill will provide uh, uh, matching funds in kind through services um, to not exceed 805,000. And it would authorize me, I'm designated as an authorized representative to act on behalf of East Fishkill, excuse me, for said grant, and that I'm authorized to execute the grant application for the Green Initiative Grant Program. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. And discussion? Like I said, this is for the grant, and hopefully we get it, because we're, we've got a lot of water systems now. So, Nick, the implementation of this, once uh, we, uh, we have the grant, uh, is going to be with a third agency doing this, or is it going to be managed by the town? No, I believe the grant pays for the... In right. We bid it out. We yeah, we'll manage Actually, it. the actual program itself. Right, we bid it out for the insta to equipment and installation, and then the grant reimburses us for it. But would it be operated by the town? Oh, yes, after, oh, yes. Afterward, yes. 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 Then Once we it's own it's installed, everything. yes. Okay. So then they just have to drive up and down the streets to get the water meter readings instead of having to go to each house. Because in New York City, they use Con Edison at times, and they pay a certain amount. So because they have to do the reading of the meters, right. they also take care of these. Yeah. So what will happen Central is... Central Hudson could do it, probably. Probably. What 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 will happen is I'm sure all of us on the board has gotten complaints before from residents in whatever, whatever water district about a estimated bill. This will eliminate all of that. So, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much. 
Uh, budget transfers, we do have one budget transfer. Uh, this was kicked back from last month. Everybody received the budget transfer. Are there any comments or questions for our comptroller? He's with us. Pretty self-explanatory. Do I have a motion to approve the budget transfer? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Comments. Let's start with uh, let's start with our highway superintendent. Okay. You're working. You're, 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 you've been working. <laughs> I'm gonna get you out there to show show you all the work we've been doing. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm taking you out tomorrow. I believe. All right. So we've can uh, we've done some continued pipe work and replacement on Gene Court, Wilmot Court. Our jet back there has been out cleaning in different areas where we've had some trouble with all the hard rain and flooding we've been getting. So we've uh, been sending out our, our jet back there to certain low-lying areas to clean out some basins and also some dry wells. Um, also, we are in prime paving season right now. With the help of Intercounty Paving, we have prepared and paved Deerwood, Cedar Lane, Tamarack, Nicholson, and Forest View. We also started our town collaboration project today with the town of Kent and the town of Pauling on Jensen Road and Drew Road, and we will be up there as well tomorrow to continue on that. And uh, we, did, we did have some severe storms and quite a bit of rain, and that did bring down some trees, but nothing major that we couldn't handle, and uh, we're, we're back to normal right now. Excellent. That's about it for us right now. Thank you, sir. Chief, how are you, sir? I am well, thank you. Anything how are you today? on in the police department? few things. So since our last meeting, we've had 1,700 calls for service. 1,700? 1,698 to be exact. Oh, wow. So he's exaggerating. He said 1,700. You got me. You got me. <laughs> we've had 90 offense reports with regards to uh, criminal incidents, 25 arrests, and four occasions where my offices have uh, responded to calls of individuals with opioid overdoses and have saved their lives on four different occasions since our last meeting. We are working closely with the Dutchess County Drug Task Force to uh, address those issues. We've had our New York State Agricultural Markets Law inspection the other day. Our facility uh, did very well. Uh, they're recommending we submit a written policy uh, with regards to animal control which we are working on, and we will be able to submit it in the time fact that, that, that they are requesting. With regards to policy, uh, another one is a towing list requirement policy. Uh, we've had something uh, in place for since, since the police department started, and um, it's, we need to put it in writing. So we've done the research, and that will be turned into the town board, I would imagine, beginning of the of next week. We have partnered with the Conic Resources for Independence Mid-Hudson uh, Interpreter Services, specifically sign language. So if we need an interpreter for sign language, we uh, have just put together a contract with them. The contract is per diem, so it doesn't cost us anything. But if we need, we can now service uh, special needs individuals for sign language. So I would ask the town residents, if you know someone who may require those services, please let them know that we now can offer that. We will post it on our, on our web page. So we've had a couple of incidents some, some of the residents might be interested in. Uh, most recently on Zerner Boulevard off of Lake Walton Road, there was a uh, large police presence. We were looking for an individual that committed several crimes, including stealing vehicles. In the town of Wappingers, he fled into East Fishko. We worked very closely with the state police, and we apprehended that individual. So there is no concern for the residents in that area. That person was arrested. The incidents happened outside of town. It just overflowed into our town. Uh, second incident, which was on Beekman Road. A, a house was burglarized. We, uh, the residents were actually home at the time. The individual fled, and uh, my officers grabbed him right down the road shortly thereafter, and, um, and it was on, 
and several East Fishco residents stopped, got out of their cars, and assisted my officer. Uh, several East Fishco residents picked up the phone to, uh, to, to say that there's an officer here and I think he needs some help. So I want to thank those three individuals that stopped to help uh, and made those phone calls. Thank you. It means a lot, your support. Uh, finally, handicap spot. We've moved our handicap spot to the very front of the building, which is right next to our main entrance, so you no longer have to park in the back where the handicap spot was. We've moved that. Thank you to this man and his crew. They put that in last, uh, last month for us. And that's it. Thank you, Chief. Uh, you can't use the handicap spot, Councilman. I'm sorry. Yes. Councilman B. Pan. Um, uh, just to reiterate some of the remarks that Nick made. Thank you so, uh, very much to Bill and Christine. They did a phenomenal job with the fireworks display. Kenny, Chief, thank you for your guys helping out as well. Even though it was rained out the first day, we're happy we were able to have it before the end of the weekend. Um, congratulations to the East Fishco Patriots Blue for winning the 10 U State Tournament. And um, they're just moving on to the next tournament. They have another tournament coming up. So uh, congratulations and good luck at the uh, next level. And uh, lastly, congratulations to Kohlmeyer uh, Arbor Care, a local East Fishco business. Uh, they were named the uh, Hudson Valley Magazine's Best of Hudson Valley this year. So congratulations to them. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their summer. I'll see you at the end of August. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Franco, how Chief, are you? I'm great. How you doing? Good. All good? Yeah. Chief, again, thank you for all that you guys do. All the girls and men and women there. You guys have been tremendous. Thank we you. always hear about it and we're, you make us very proud and safe. Uh, quickly, just want to give a, a little update on our hometown hero banners. Um, uh, according to our banner supplier, he indicated that there's currently a shortage of material. So uh, there's going to be a delay for current and some, some of the future banners. So hopefully you'll be able to get that product in soon in the near future and we'll be able to get them back up. But Kenny, again, thanks a lot for doing. I know we have some more that need to go up. So yes. I'm sure we'll find some time, hopefully, hopefully we'll some time to get that we'll up. We'll have to find some, some places. You'll <laughs> yes. find time, won't yeah. you? We'll find time. <laughs> All right. And quickly, I want to thank the community for... Um, for coming out and supporting our local businesses. You know, the supervisor and I did a spotlight on East Fishkill today and we were talking to some of the business owners and some of the stories that they've told getting through the pandemic um, are really great and the challenges that they faced and they all came back and said how wonderful our community was. And you know, if you get a chance, get out there, keep supporting them, go out to dinner locally, they would really appreciate it and um, you know, keep up that great work. We, we really do appreciate that. Thank you, Councilman. So just to pick up where the councilman left off, uh, being in business, it is extremely difficult at this time and uh, everybody is having issues with uh, especially the workforce. I would uh, uh, implore anybody in the community uh, that wants to go back and participate in getting a job, please do. I think it's extremely necessary. Many businesses in our communities are really feeling the stress. I have spoken to some uh, restaurant owners, uh, including Chinese restaurants. They are forced to close at least one day a week because they have no staff. So uh, it, it is a problem. And unfortunately, I see some comments on the media, local media, where people go to some places and the wait for service is a little longer than usual. Uh, please uh, don't bash those business. Everybody wants to do the right thing. Uh, being there, done that. Uh, supplies, food supplies, there is a shortage. Prices are going through the roof. It's very hard to manage a menu when from day to day you can't find what you're gonna serve the community. Um, so I, I thank the councilman and the town supervisor for addressing this, but it's becoming a national issue. It's not just for the town of East Fishkill. Um, on another note, I constantly am in touch with the highway superintendent and you know, uh, they are right now 
doing a lot of paving, and it will continue to do, to do so throughout the summer. Something uh, happened in the East Fishkill, uh, El Sale community last month. And again, this is, um, before people go to the, to the media, again, local media, and scare people, please reach out to us. We're always available to answer your phone calls. The town supervisor office is very responsive. There was an incident where an animal was found dead on somebody's front lawn. And we had actually started treating the Hillside Lake with uh, uh, approved, DEC approved uh, uh, material to kill, to kill uh, the vegetation. Well, without letting us know, they went out, they put it out, scared the community, and really this should not be happening. We've been using the same stuff that we use on Amadine Pond with the fish. They've been using it for years. Uh, we would not really alarm and do anything to a community to even uh, affect the animals. So again, we are always available. Uh, we live in a community. My business is right down the road. Please let us know and uh, let's work together. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, our next meeting is well, that's good. Deputy Keep Supervisor, going. you're up. That's good. Uh, just a reminder, Community Day is not that far away. It's in September, it's only a month and a half away and before you know it, because we're all gonna start traveling over the next week or so. Uh, if you're gonna be involved in Community Day, Oh, I'm leaving Monday. Um, <laughs> you know when it is, Community Day? September 18th. 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 Uh, big new show this year, Ryan Dutcher, the illusionist, a John Jay graduate. And that was kind of his first magic act that he graduated. Um, <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, but everybody have a nice, safe, stay safe over the summer and your travels and your vacations and get out there and enjoy the community. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman. Our next meeting is August 26, 2021. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting ended. Thank you.